Hey guys, it's Mei Mei and I am so excited to bring you this video. The sweet people at We Are Memory Keepers sent me the foil quill to try out as part of their um, release of the, of the foil quill and lots of goodies to go with it. Let me show you real quick what we're gonna look at. So we've got the foil quill. This is the standard tip. It comes in three tip sizes and we have ordered them to have in store. They are, we are waiting on them to arrive. And once they do, what I ordered for you guys were the individuals, not the set. So that way you could choose which size you wanted. I think you guys would like that better. So like I said, comes in three sizes can be used on pretty much any machine. We'll look at that as we get going, but let me show you what came in the package for me to try out. So there's this beautiful foil that comes in these packages like this. I love that it's pre-cut. It's a great size for A2 card makers. Y'all know who we are, right? This one is multiple colors in these kind of pale, beautiful metallics here. This one is gold. Actually, it's called Gold Finch. That's this one. They also sent along these guys. These are um, USB sticks to put in your computer that give you all of these designs. So this one in particular is called Icons and Words. This one is by the artist Paige Evans. So this one was curated by Paige Evans and look at these cute designs. There are lots of designs, see in there? I'm gonna show you how to use this. Now I'm gonna be using this today with my Cricut Maker and using Cricut Design Space. That's the one I know the most about. I also think it's the easiest for me to use. I don't have a silhouette, but there are lots of videos out there of people using this with silhouette as well. The other thing they sent me to try were all of these guys. This is more foil. These are bigger pieces. These are, let me look at the dimensions on these. These are 12 by 96 inches. This is a lot of foil on this roll. And they're beautiful colors. Look at that one there. That one is called Rose. This one's called Emerald. Uh, this one is Ultraviolet. That's beautiful. Um, champagne, which is stunning. Do you see that champagne color? This one is Silver. Very pretty color, there we go. And then this one is Spearmint. That's a good a good name for this color, very spearminty. And then Ultraviolet again, so I got two Ultraviolets. Cool, I probably won't get into using these big foils today in this video, I'll use them later. But I think I wanna show you how to use these smaller guys because I actually think if you're a card maker like me, these will make life easier. Based on my research, I've not used this yet, we're gonna use it together. All right, let's head to the Cricut first to create a design. Okay, so you can see here I'm at Cricut.com and I'm gonna head to the top corner where it says design. I don't really know what I'm gonna design yet. We're gonna kind of play and see. The first thing I wanna show you is how to load the images that come on those little USB sticks. They're really cute. There's a lot of great images and we may even use one of those today. So the first thing I need to do is sign in. So I've got my email here, my password there and I'll click sign in and that will take me to my Cricut Design Space account doing its little plug-in. It does this a lot. It's no big deal. It kind of does that in the background, keeps us updated, and it takes it a second or two, not usually too long, depending on my internet. Let me see. Today I am on wireless, and that takes me longer. When I'm plugged directly into my router, uh, then it doesn't take me as long, but when I'm on wireless, it takes me longer. Okay, all done. That took about a minute to a minute and a half. Seems like forever because I don't like to wait, but that's about a minute or a minute and a half. Okay, so what I want to do is walk you through using the USB stick. Okay, to upload the images from your USB stick in the little package that I showed you, I'm gonna show you using the Paige Evans um, images. They're really cute, so here's what you do. On your Windows computer, you're gonna go to where your documents are, your files. On your Mac, you're gonna go to Finder. Now, I've already opened Finder and have it ready right here, so I'm just gonna click this, and you will see right down here where it says Devices, you're looking for this one. Now to keep you from being confused. Treat this just like you would anything you load into your computer from the USB or even like a photo card. If you guys are uploading pictures or anything, you'll just find it over here in this area. So now that I've got it, I'm gonna click on that and notice that inside of that USB, there are three things. You get this folder that is full of PNG images. So that's images that have a clear background. This one has SVGs and this one has tips and tricks. Let's open tips and tricks. I want you to see what's available to you here. This is pretty cool. I'm going to move this to the middle of the screen. Here you can see 
that it gives you information about what's in this little, they call it a, desi a design drive. It shows you that for Cricut, you import the SVG file, select and convert each path to draw, select the entire design and use the attach tool to hold your design in place and for additional help refer to cr for Cricut instructions. Okay, that's awesome. Look at this. For the silhouette, it tells you to import the PNG file. That's interesting because I didn't know that for silhouette. To so select design and use trace tool to convert the design. For additional help, refer to silhouette instructions. Import SVG file for advanced software. That's cool. And then for the scan and cut, import your SVG, which I expected on the scan and cut. And then for a Sizzix, which I also don't know, they also use the SVG. So then there's some tips and tricks for you, and then there's other languages. Isn't this awesome? This is really cool that they include this, so don't forget that this is available to you in the drive. All right, I want these SVGs, so I'm going to double-click on the SVGs, and I'm going to go to, hmm, um, I just want to look at some. Let's look at the arrows. Look how cute these are, little images that we can use. All right, so let's put these into Design Space. So I've loaded them into my computer right here. I'm going to close out my finder. I don't need it right now. Now I need to go to Design Space. All right, so I'm at Design Space, and what I want to do is start a new project. So I'll click here to start a new project. And just so you guys can see everything on the screen really clearly, I'm going to take my grid off by clicking on the square that's between the two zeros at the top. So I'm going to turn that grid off. And at the bottom right hand, I'm going to change the color of my canvas because um, it makes it easier for you guys to see. You've told me in videos. So I'm going to change it to this nice green color. Now let's bring one of those cute images from that SVG or that design drive in. So we're going to click Upload. I'm going to upload an image. And I'm going to Browse. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to the same place basically that I was before, but I'm going to go right here and open this little, I'm just going to click on that little drive that's right there. I'm going to open the SVGs and I'm going to decide what I want to bring in. So I haven't looked at stationery. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is cute. Look at these little images, this glue bottle. I want to see if I can bring in multiples at one time. Nope, we have to do one at a time. So let's bring in that glue bottle because it's super cute. Look at that. Okay, so it's named for me. I can tag it if I want. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to say save it. And then I can import it into my project just by inserting the image. So now I have that little glue bottle. Now here's the thing I want to point out to you when you bring these images in, okay? Notice the colors and the fills. We don't want that. We're using this with our full quill, and our full quill needs to see it as a drawn image, okay? So what we're going to do is, you see where this says line type cut? We're going to change this to draw, and you'll see that now we have our lines, and that's what we want because the full quill is not going to fill in space. It's going to draw these lines and images. This is super cute, isn't it? Okay, so let's use this glue bottle, and let's go get another image. I don't know what we might use from there, but let's find something. So this is a really cute one. It says you and me. I'm going to bring that one in and show you how we can use it. So same thing. It's named for me. I can tag it if I want, but I don't need to. I'm going to put that into my image there. And I'm going to insert it just like this. Okay, so I've got you and me. Now again, see how this is filled in? The foil quill is not going to fill in for you. It's going to draw those lines. So I need to come up here and change it to draw. Okay, now I'm going to resize this guy down, and it may be too small for what I wanted. I thought it would be really cute like this to put you and me on the front of that. That may be too small. Let's see, what size is our glue bottle? Our glue bottle is, oh, it's little. Let's change the size of our glue bottle. Let's make it uh, 3.5 wide. And now I have some room for my little image here. Let's put this in, you and me. And how wide did this? Oh, he got really big. I can't have him that big. So I'm going to unlock the proportions and make this guy five inches tall. Oh, he's so squatty like that. So let's bring him in a little bit. More like that. All right. And then put this little you and me inside here. So you can resize this. I'm just doing this to show you how it works, but I think this is cute. So there's these two little images together. Now I want to do some text of my own. You don't have to just use the images that are on that design drive. So I'm going to use some text that says... Uh, stuck like glue. So you and me, stuck like glue. All right, 
This font is not what I want. A couple reasons. Number one, it's not my favorite look. Number two, it's not a writing style. Okay, you need to use a writing style with your foil quill. So let's head up here to the top. The first thing I want to do is where it says style, I want to change this to writing. That saves me so much time. I don't have to look for anything else. That is a stinking cute font, but let's come up here and look at some other ones. Now, this is where you can get lost for days. What I'm going to do is look at only Cricut fonts by clicking on Cricut. That'll save me a little bit of time. It'll take some of the images out of my way. And now I can just look through and find a really cute one. Let's look at this one. Mm, no, too much work I have to do on that one. Let's do, this is kind of cute, but let's keep looking. How about this one? Something simple. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, stuck like glue. So I'm going to put this right, oops, let me grab it. Put it right down here. And why don't we make this a card front? This is super cute. I think it's adorable. So let's put that like that. And let's add a shape. Now I'm not going to um, draw the shape. The shape is going to be a cut. So let's make this the size of a card front. So let's go unlock the proportions. And let's make it four by five and a quarter. And that way I can mount it onto a full size A2 card base. All right, so my image is way too big. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab everything here, okay? I'm gonna shrink this down, and maybe up. Remember, I had unlocked proportion, so it's doing, it's doing what I want it to do, what I ask it to do. Now notice how that went behind my card. Don't fret, just come up here to arrange and tell it to send to the front. And also notice how I can't really see it. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change the color of this to white because then I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm not gonna print this. I'm not gonna foil quill this onto white. I'm gonna foil quill it onto a darker color because I want you guys to see how that works. But I think this will be cute. All right, now that I know what I'm working with, I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it, but since we're gonna make this a card front, I'm gonna fill this up as much as I can. So I decided to make a change and I'll show you what it is. Showing you this project using a rectangle is not the best way to show you. That's too simple. I wanna show you with a shape. So I'm gonna to head to images and I'm gonna find a scalloped oval. You'll see why this makes more sense. You can do this with rectangles, no problem. But I wanna find an image that will uh, surround our little picture there and make more sense. This one looks good and it's in my subscription. So I'm gonna click on this oval and insert it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my little image on this guy. So I'm gonna get this covered nice and all the way around and then I'm gonna send this to the back. So send to the back and see that in that cute. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit more, just like so. And this will make more sense. This way I can show you how to attach cardstock to your um, to your mat and still cut out what you do. Okay. Now the same thing, we have to attach all this together. If we don't attach it together, then the Cricut won't know to keep that writing right there. It'll want to put it somewhere else. So what we've got now is we've got a cut image here. Okay. And the way you know that is if you head to your layers panel, you see where the oval says cut. So we're going to cut that oval, but all of these guys are draw images and that's what we want. So now we're ready to make this thing. I'm gonna click make it in the top corner and it brings it onto my mat. Now here's something I wanna to talk to you about. Because you're gonna lay the foil on your mat and tape it down, okay? I'm gonna move this down just a little bit. I'm gonna move it down an inch and in an inch. This way I know I need to place my cardstock an inch in and an inch down. And then I have room to tape my foil around that. That'll make sense when I put it on the mat. So I just wanna make sure I moved this down just a little bit. All right, and when you put your cardstock on, you want to make sure you have a piece that's big enough to cover. And so I'm going to need a piece that's um, six inches by about seven inches. That should cover it. Okay, let's unbox our foil quill. So this is the box it comes in. I have taken it out already, so it's a little bit messy the way I tore my box. But I got, like I said, the standard size quill. So I'm going to take this little guy out and show you what all comes inside. So this is just cute packaging. We don't need to keep that. Here is my standard size full quilt nib. And remember, I told you there were multiple sizes. There's three different sizes. So there's that. It comes with the USB already connected to it. Then you get this little um, package. And in here, you have this little heat resistor piece. I'll show you how that works. And you have all of these little adapters. Now, they're real easy to understand, which I think is really cool. The first one, I'm gonna pull it out here, A 
is for a silhouette, which I think is really interesting. A silhouette's the first machine I ever remember hearing about, so it's A, that works in my brain, right? B is for your brother's scan and cut, makes sense. C is for the cricket, and then D is for other machines. I think like the, is there a Sizzix machine or a, a Pazzles? Let me look and see if there's an actual name for it so you'll know. Oh, here it is, yes, yeah, Sizzix. So Silhouette, Brother, Cricut, Sizzix. So that's what the D is for. So I don't need these. So I'm gonna put them back in the bag and just put them away. Um, I will need the Brother Scan and Cut at some point because I do have a Brother machine. But for now, I don't need these. I'll just put those away. So we're gonna need C. This little guy is the heat plate. And what this is for is while you're heating up your foil quill, you don't want the tip to touch any of the plastic of your machine. Um, and so this is for that. I don't know why those are not cutting that plastic. That's some sturdy plastic. All right, so there's my little um, metal piece. And let's just look at this. This little book that comes with your foil quill is your quick start guide, your instruction manual, okay? If you go right here to quick start, it says number one, here's your quill, choose your adapter. So C is mine. I need to put this onto my little quill and twist it up. I like that it twists and it doesn't snap. That's good, we don't have to pull anything. So there's my Cricut adapter all installed. Then it says number two, I'm gonna install this into my machine. And it's interesting, it actually shows the maker as the machine, so that's cool. Let's head over and install it together. So I have you guys overhead. The full quill is considered an accessory. So it goes in your A side, not your blade side. That is where we hold all of our blades and things like that, but this is an accessory. And remember, the reason you know that is because this writes like a marker, so you would put markers in this side. Okay, so we're gonna take this plastic piece out because the plastic piece we installed is gonna replace that for us in the machine. So I'm gonna reach underneath my A housing. I'm gonna hold the top of that little piece and I'm gonna kind of give it some pressure on the bottom. You can kind of squeeze that little um, piece in a little bit as you push up and that will help it to come out. So I got it to pop loose there. Easy, be very careful with these, okay? And then, now that this is out, I'm gonna put it right here so I don't lose it. And now this guy can sit right inside there and we can close it in just like any other accessory. Now for the controversial part, and I wanna talk to you about this, okay? Plugging this guy in. We are says you can plug this directly into your machine. I believe that you probably can, but I wanna give you a couple of cautions. Number one, Cricut does not approve of that. So if you plug this into your machine and your machine still has warranty on it, um, you, can, you do, from what I understand, void your warranty, okay? So be very careful about that. The reason we have to plug this in is because it has to heat up to work with full. So when you plug this into your um, USB outlet on your machine, it will heat up. But again, if you plug this into your machine, it will void your warranty. That is per Cricut. I don't know about any other machine, but I do know about Cricut. But the second thing I wanna tell you is this. Your warranty on your machine is only good for one year, okay? My warranty is up. I've had this one well over a year. Matter of fact, all the machines I've had that I do have, I've had over a year. So I could plug this into this machine. However, I'm not. I don't want to do that. What I'm gonna do instead is use one of these little guys. Let me take it out of the plug for you to see it. I'm gonna use one of these little guys. It's just a little, um, what are these called? Cubes that you would plug in pretty much anything. And this came on Amazon. I bought this in a package. We use these all over the office. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my USB into here and then I'm gonna plug it into the wall. Now notice when I do that, that little blue light comes on. This is when I need to place this little metal piece underneath. Now in the maker, well that's interesting, that's why they did it. It's got this little um, lip and I'm just gonna lay it over this bar so that it's underneath it while it heats up. Now let's see what this is saying. So I have installed it. I put the heat shield down. Okay, so plug in full quill. Power source may be found on machine, computer, wall outlet, or power bank. You can also use one of those battery power banks, which is really cool. Um, the machine must be within two feet of the power source to accommodate the cord length. I made sure I'm really close because the cord is gonna move as my carriage moves, so you wanna make sure you're really close on that. Then it says, once plugged into compatible power source, the full quill will light up. 
not all USB ports on cutting machines power it. So if you plug it in, it doesn't light up. If you plug it to your machine, that means you need to do an external source. All right, place heat resistant plate under the foil quill while preparing project and then allow foil quill five minutes to heat up. All right, so we're gonna let this heat for five minutes while I get my mat ready. So this is the foil that I originally wanted to use. Remember I told you this is the package that I think is perfect for card making? And I still think it is, and it's really good for sentiments and things, but it's pretty small. So I'm not gonna be able to use this one. I need more space for the piece that I designed, and that's all right. So I'm gonna use one of those rolls that we got, and this is the silver. Uh, it's probably called something besides silver. Let me see what it's called so you'll know exactly. This is called silver, how about that? Okay, so I'm gonna take this little piece off here. This is a little piece of washi that's holding it together. And I'm just gonna cut myself a piece of foil that's big enough to cover where I need uh, the image to be drawn. So I'm just gonna cut myself a piece for right here. So here's the piece I'm gonna use. I'm gonna lay this over my cardstock just like so, and then I'm going to washi tape this down. Now, I have been watching some videos on the YouTubes about this machine, about the foil quill, and I, dis I discovered something by watching somebody's video. The more time you spend to smooth this foil out right here, the better your results will be. The reason I noticed that is because I saw somebody do it and it got kind of buckly, like um, the foil got a little buckly under the under the foil, under the quill, and it didn't lay down as smooth as you would have thought it would have. So I'm gonna try really hard to get this nice and smooth, even to the point that I think I'm gonna stick the washi to the foil and then pull a little bit to get some pressure over here. See, I'm kind of pulling it. I don't wanna wrinkle it too bad because I want it to make sure it rubs everywhere it needs to rub with that foil quill. And probably using too much tape, I usually do. I'm gonna put a piece up here at the top as well. And this is, um, you're probably wondering, this is my Chalk Couture placement tape. I love this stuff. It's super cheap through Chalk Couture. Um, I'll put a link to it below in case you'd like to pick some up. It's really cheap. You get a whole bunch of it, and I love it. So I'm back to Cricut.com, and now what I need to do is tell this guy I'm ready to continue. So I'm going to go to the bottom right and click Continue. And when I do that, I will be taken to this screen. It's gonna connect to my maker, which it'll do automatically for me. If for some reason it doesn't connect to your machine, you might need to pair your machine. It's super easy to do, but that's what, that'll let you know there at the top. I'm gonna choose 80 pound cardstock because I'm using some Brutus Monroe that's really thick and it kind of needs that um, deeper cut. I'm also going to change the pressure from default to more. This is just for me. Your machine may be calibrated a little bit differently, but I've recognized with this cardstock in particular, it cuts better on that more pressure. Notice here it tells me I need my black uh, tip pen. I don't. Instead of black pen, I'm using my full quill. Okay. I am going to use my fine point blade and we are ready to go now to the machine. So now it's time to load my mat in. I'm just gonna load it like I traditionally would, but before I do that, I wanna remove this little heat protector there, so put that aside, hit the load. Now, just to let you know, my camera tripod is right behind the Cricut here, so as this feeds through, you might see me put my arm behind, but that's only because I'm gonna make sure this mat doesn't hit the tripod and just use my hand to help it. So if you see me go back there, that's why. I'm not doing anything for the quill itself. All right, we're plugged in. I've got plenty of room for this guy to wiggle as it needs, and um, I think we're ready to go. Now, full disclosure, for all you keen-eyed folks, you'll notice that I had to change this. I tried to foil this while ago and it did a beautiful job, but my internet blinked and when it did, I just went and hit make it again without moving my image in like I showed you guys how to do. So my image was off and that was totally my fault because I didn't pay attention when I had to um, go back and redo the cut. So just make sure when it's time for this, your image is on the mat in design space where you want it to be. All right, let me show you this. It's really cool, ready? We're gonna hit the, uh, I gotta go tell it to go on the machine. You guys will probably see in my video, you will catch it on my mat that I didn't catch that it had moved, but you guys will probably catch it. All right, so I've got this guy ready. The Cricut head is flashing. Let's click go. So now the foil quill is heating the foil on top and applying the folds to the cardstock underneath, which is really cool, and it really does a good job. I'll show you when we finish. I did get to see a sneak peek of my messed up one earlier. I don't want to show you that one because I don't want you to think that it messed up. I messed that up completely. Did 
So that's doing the writing inside the little box that says you and me. Now notice it pauses here and it flashes again. Now it wants to do that second set of writing, the one uh, stuck together like glue, or I think that's what I put on there. I'm gonna hit that again. Hit the cricket head. And now it's gonna come do the writing underneath. Now you will see that I let that finish cutting on top of the full. I've seen it done both ways. I've seen some people pause in between, and I tried to pause to tell you this, but the pause didn't work. So I've seen some people pause in between, take the full off, and then keep going. There, And you can do that. But for me, I can't reuse this full anyway, and I know that's probably, for my frugal friends, you're really going to hate this, and I'll tell you why. Wherever this has gone over, that foil no longer exists on this piece. So if you try to use this again on anything else, if your quill crosses over any of those lines, it'll get skips in your foil. So I just went ahead and let that cut it all for me. I'm gonna pull this out now. Oh, I have to use the right button. Pull this out and now we'll take this off. So I can take off the foil so you can see how pretty that is. Look, oh my goodness. And then I can take off, actually I can just go right here and take this guy off. Just like, well, let me get it all the way off so we can see it. Take this guy off so you can see what has happened there. Now, one thing I'll caution you about that I'm noticing from um, letting it cut like I did is some of that foil residue is here on the edges. However, it comes off because it wasn't heated. Okay, so let's go to the other camera so you can see it up close. Now you can see here, I brought this to my work service. I did not clean it like this to get the little foil pieces off yet. I thought I would do that with you guys watching. So I have this little cloth that I just use for everything. And I'm just going to wipe all of that excess foil off. But are you kidding me? Look at this. That is the cutest. And I know somebody in my staff, <laughs> Mandy is going to freak out. Mandy wants to do foiling on stickers. And this is so good for what she does. She's a planner girl. Look at this shimmer right here. Let me get the light to hit that shimmer. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love how this looks. So that is the foil quill and how it works. And remember, that's the standard tip. I'm pretty sure there's a fine tip and a bold tip on either side of that tip. So um, again, we're going to be carrying these in the store. We're just waiting on them to arrive. I bought them in separate so you could get, uh, you could choose the tip you want and not have to buy all three at one time. And I think I'm going to see, if you guys want me to, tell me in the comments, do you want me to carry this? You do have to use this foil, by the way, based on videos I've seen. Other people do. They've tried other foils and it didn't work. Apparently, this one is formulated for it. I don't have that from the, from the manufacturer. I just have seen that in other videos where they tried other foils. So I think I'm going to try to carry this foil. Um, or would you rather me carry the smaller foil? You tell me. And after I did this, I realized that I was wrong because look, that would have covered that completely. I just am not a math person. <laughs> so in my brain, I had to cover the whole section, but that's not true. I only had to cover where the foil was gonna go. So this would have worked. I just, you know me in math. So there you go. I think it's a really, really cool thing. I'm gonna tell you there's a learning curve. I'm not gonna joke. It's one of those things where, you know when you first bought your Cricut machine and it sat in the box for a while because you were intimidated by it? I'm afraid this will happen with this tool too, but it shouldn't. You really should take it out of the box, 
Treat it like a marker, the way you do with your other things that you do with your Cricut. Just know you have to put the foil down for the marker to work, if that makes sense. So don't buy it and let it sit. Buy it and use it. I love it. I think it's really cool. I want to say thank you to We Are for sending it to me. I'm super excited to have been able to test this out. I'm not through. I'm, I think I'm going to use it for other stuff. I've got some ATCs coming up next week that I'm doing. This will be really fun to do on some ATCs. So you may see it again next week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you get a foil quill and you make a project, I want to see it. Head to our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. Share with us your photos and let us see what you're doing. Sitting like that's just not as cool as seeing the shimmer. Let me see if I can get it to shimmer for you. There it goes. Look at that shine right there in the middle. So pretty. All right, guys, have a great one. Talk to you again real soon.